Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. To my right, Brock Shimano. We started Monday on a positive note with Egypt stepping in and buying U.S. wheat for the first time since April. But that didn't carry us all the way through, did it, Brock? We ended a little weaker, didn't no, we? No. As soon as, uh, as soon as the pit opened, we really saw the markets kind of head south. Uh, we Corn did end up the day positive, though, two and a half cents up in Chicago. Uh, soybeans up 15 and a half cents. Wheat, uh, you know, we did lose a couple cents on wheat, even though we did see those nice sales to Egypt. Kansas City was off about seven cents, uh, and Chicago was down about three and a half cents this morning. Yeah, beans were the leader to the upside. More weather problems, right, in South America? Yeah, really, soybeans in South America are starting to become a concern. Egg Rule out of Brazil came out and said that uh, 83% of the crop is planted right now. Usually we're about 93%, so we're a little bit behind there. I think some dry weather in southern Brazil and some wetter than anticipated weather in Argentina right. is really the driving force behind the, the us being behind on our pace to yeah. plant. Yeah, I think China, or I think uh, beans also got a boost from from news of China sniffing around for uh, some pretty serious bean purchases in the coming weeks. So we'll see if that materializes going forward. But in terms of export business, we sort of came out with some pretty disappointing numbers here today. You know, we did miss the mark on uh, soybeans and corn. Wheat actually exceeded expectations, and that doesn't even factor in the Egypt sales that we saw today. We'll mm -hmm. see those in subsequent weeks. But if we take a look at this chart that we've been following all marketing the year long, the green line is what we should be expecting for sales given seasonalities, or excuse me, inspections of exports uh, given seasonalities. The red bars are what we actually are seeing. On this soybean chart, you can see that we did meet our expectations, but analysts had a little bit higher expectations, so we did meet, meet uh, miss the market's analysts' uh, expectations for this, this week in export inspections. Uh, we are still 184 million bushels ahead of pace, and we gained about 7 million bushels this week. So pretty good overall for soybeans, even though we were a little bit lower than what analysts were expecting this week. If we take a look at corn. We kind of know this, this picture. We've been following this all season long. We are well behind on exports uh, of corn right now, about 52 million bushels behind pace, and we fell about 12 million bushels uh, again this week. So we continue to see those terrible right. sales really in the corn market. Yeah, you know, 50 million bushels behind pace on corn. Uh, when we look at ethanol, we're thinking 100 to 150 million bushels behind pace on ethanol. So, you know, you're looking at potential 200 million bushels of higher stocks. If these if these numbers continue to dictate throughout the marketing year, uh, you know I, I'm really concerned about other factors in the corn market. Uh, you know, not only the demand side, but also the transportation sector. Obviously, really a lot of uncertainty about the barge situation. The river has come to a very low level. Uh, there is a you know a significant risk in the next week that that river market will be shut down, which obviously would be detrimental for moving grain. Uh, the other thing I think is you know the physical cliff policy issues. You know, those are apparently. I'm not going to be resolved easily like we thought a week ago. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty about that, which wouldn't you say, Brock, is, is bad news for the grain? You know, I, I think it really is. You know, initially, I think we'll see some money being pulled out of the equities, given the fiscal cliff issues that we're seeing. I think that'll fall over into the commodities, probably see some money going to safe haven assets like uh, dollar index or gold. But, you know, if, if I'm a producer and I'm looking towards the end of the year, what, what is uh, your thought on what we should be doing to protect ourselves uh, right. up until the end well, of the year? Well, all these factors combined lead me to be looking pretty seriously at some price protection. Uh, you know, if you're really worried about the next three weeks, you know, going out to the end of this calendar year, which I think there's significant risk with barge issues, with uh, the physical cliff issues, we could see the corn market blow up if the, both of those things go negative. You know, look at some January short dated options. Right now, an at the money put option for a 750 put is only 10 cents. You know, protect yourself for the next three weeks. You know, when I look historically at the last 30 years, there's an even money chance that we could just see, just based on normal volatility, we could see 724. And an even 25% uh, probability, we could see 708. So if I'm a farmer and I know I got unpriced grain, then, you know, I, I've got to start looking at some options here because I think the numbers are starting to get pretty negative for corn. Yeah, I'm, I'm right with you. You know, I would definitely take a look at doing something by the end of the year, especially if you don't plan on making any cash sales. You've got to protect yourself. There's too many issues out there right now for corn. It's going to could lead us to the downside in the next few weeks or right. so. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us on Grain TV. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook or call us 877-472-4607. Have a great day.